Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this New Year's Day matchup. It's the Dirty Birds and the Buccaneers next on Madden Football. DA Sports coverage of the NFL has us on the west coast of the Sunshine State. Downtown Tampa is the spot. Raymond James Stadium. With the echoes of cannon blast still ringing in our ears from the north end zone, the Bucks were introduced a moment ago, and they are all set as their guys will do battle with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. Side, my good friend Charles Davis. Now Charles, so often it's the quarterbacks that are in the spotlight, and in this game, no different. We have a very compelling matchup. Matt Ryan of the Falcons, Tom Brady of the Bucks. And I think for me, and this isn't an original thought by any stretch, and probably for these two head coaches as well, the key for them is going to be limiting the turnovers, limiting the free possession. I mean, this isn't saying anything you don't already know, but you've got to be able to make the most out of your drives and see if your defense can help you out and take the ball away from the other team and give you a few extras. Set to go, Young Way Koo ready to do the honors. And off we go from Tampa. This fielded right at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. First try on offense for the Bucs and their veteran quarterback, Tom Brady. Well, we've all seen what Tom Brady can do on a football field for a couple of decades now. But how about his most impressive accomplishment? Moving to a different franchise and taking them to a Super Bowl title as well. Not many players can continually stiff arm father time the way that he has. On play action, now Brady. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Fournette, a first down carry. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Brady going to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Evans. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 22-yard line. Nice methodical opening drive here. They're already in the field goal range. They're in a good spot. You know that people like to take a shot in this part of the field. But at the same time, as methodical as they've been, they might want to run the ball a little bit here, too. And just on the outskirts of the red zone, they have options now. Either way, though, they've come out with a purpose. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. 
A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs. It gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. Now a first and ten at the eleven. I'm gonna run you From the gun, it's Brady. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Fired that one in there. Able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Brady to throw on third and one. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Giovanni Bernard there to make the grab. And the Bucs take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. They got to love that. Nine play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, Defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And that one gives the Bucks a seven to nothing lead. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucs. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And Patterson will not return it. It comes out to the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be led out by their now 36-year-old quarterback who's in his 14th NFL season, the former MVP, Matt Ryan. And I think if there's one quarterback in the league who sometimes gets taken for granted, to me it's Matt Ryan because I think throughout his career, He's been consistently excellent. Frequent member of the 4,000-yard club, savvy veteran, knows how to throw the deep ball and create big plays, and yes, he will beat you from the pocket. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And this defense feeling the encouragement. They stop him at the line of scrimmage on the first play of the afternoon. No gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Ryan. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. I don't care what game it is, everyone's always looking for an early advantage, an early break, and they almost had one there. That should have been an interception. Nice catch. Just couldn't get his feet down in bounds. And offensively lucky to have that one back. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked up by Jordan Whitehead. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for Buckingham TD. This defense looking like they have come to play the pick six, and just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visit. What do we hear during these drills? Pass. Pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. I 
Trubisky. That's the interception. That means everybody finds someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And that'll make the score 14 to 0. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11. Matt Ryan and the offense heading back onto the field. And now, Charles, this becomes a pretty important second drive for them. They're already down a pair of scores here in the first quarter. As you noted, they're down two scores. And to me, they're down a possession or a service break if this were tennis, right? Because they just gave one up. Only their second drive now. Run their offense. Try and get back into the game that way. And then look for some help from their defense. Trying to forget about that pick six last time out. Back to the air. Ryan after the pick six. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Good throw there to start the second possession. Maybe help erase the memory of the interception he threw first possession. Yeah, I think a lot of the time now there's a communication between the head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback's coach. All right, we're going to get him settled. It's not easy after you throw in a pick six. You might want to just run the football, but I think in most cases, you want to give him easy throws, throws that he's comfortable with to get him going again. It's not necessarily just throwing one, one or two yards. What throws does he like to make? Give him a couple of those and get him going. Definitely looked like one he was comfortable with on the last throw. just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They'll run on first down. It's Davis. Tough running, but not a lot to show for it. They stop him shy of the 25. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there, but how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Ryan. And he's got his man in stride complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A big play there on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Now Ryan. Finds a seam inside the 40, a little juke. And he'll be taken down at the 26. I tell you what, it looks like he's shaking off that pick six just fine. It's not just defensive backs that have to have short memories. Quarterbacks utilize that as well. A much more confident throw right there. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. From the gun, it's Ryan. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. Not the start to this one that any quarterback would want or envision. Remember, he had the pick six, and here he ends up on his backside. 
And you have to wonder to yourself, okay, after throwing the pick six, did he get too careful with the football and not deliver downfield and take that sack? They've got to make sure that he's really into this game. Nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Falcon football, as they've got it facing a second and long situation. To throw is Ryan. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Vita Vea picks up his second sack of the afternoon. But when you're down a couple of scores like this, CD, you can't afford too many plays that go in the wrong direction like that one. Yeah, when you take a good look at it broadly, sacks are better than giving up an interception. But where they are on the scoreboard, they've got to get rid of all of that and just create positive plays for themselves in order to have a chance. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no good plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. Right side. That's complete to Gronkowski. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. But normally, you see three tight ends in a formation. You have to think to yourself, this has got to be a run. And I know as a safety, when I saw that, I took an extra step or two towards the line of scrimmage. Instead, they threw the ball, and he found one of those tight ends for a very nice pickup. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 36. Brady gives this one off to Jones. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. To throw is Brady. Oh, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time, separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Now Brady. Open man, he's got it, it's complete. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. A little football one-on-one -on -one there. He just
you see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. First down, Bernard. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Here's a give to Fournette. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Now Leonard Fournette. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Brady now to throw. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. A seven-yard touchdown grab as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Well, I don't think that we're ready yet to say the route is on, but they have certainly looked near flawless here in this first half, and now an extra point away from making it 21-0. Yeah, and your experience led you to say that because we have both seen those 21 to nothing leads come and go in this league, but this one feels pretty darn secure. And here's the other part. Even when people chip away at it, it forces you into being almost perfect on the other side, doesn't it, in order to try and mount a comeback. Extra point put through by second, and that makes the score 21 to zip. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. No return here for Patterson, so they'll begin things at the 25-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Here's Ryan to throw. Oh, it's intercepted. He's trying to give it to Ridley. Picked up by Jamel Dean. Well, we've seen a lot of mistakes here in this first half and another there on the interception. Yeah, they're certainly starting to pile up aren't they? because, let's face it, we expect the miscue here and there, but they're already down three scores and still giving the ball away. If they want to get back into this one, they've got to take care of the ball because right now the way they're playing doesn't say a whole lot for their chances. Again, we see Tom Brady in the box set to take over. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they feel really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. So after the INT, it's Brady to Evans on the slam. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Tom Brady hooking up with Mike Evans there. And the Bucs continue to pull away here in this first half. But it's not too often that you say, hey, this one's going to be over by halftime. And CD, I know our bosses probably don't want us to say that because they don't want people clicking away. But this one might be over by halftime. And since you've already put your job on the line by actually saying it, 
I will co-sign and go with you because you're my partner. We don't mean to do it, but this game has been exactly as you've described. I see no hope for them going forward. Extra point up and good by Saka, and it is 28-0. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And Patterson not going to return this. It'll come out to the 25. And the Falcons back out getting set for this next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Ryan. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. They'll run on first down. It's Davis. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Now it's Ryan. Looking sideline incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. On third down, Ryan going for it all. And it's knocked away and incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that drops a deficit from 28 to 25. So from an offensive perspective, at least able to get on the board here right in front of the two-minute warning. Yeah, now it's time to talk about complimentary football, isn't it? Because if the defense can force a three and out, there could be enough time on the clock that they can get the ball back for their offensive guys and maybe put some more points on the board before the half. Again with Tom Brady in Tampa's offense. And a trio of touchdown passes so far. They've got the lead as well. All is good in their football world at this point. And it's so much fun 
for our colleagues, right? Think about our producer, our director, everyone putting together these shots. Wouldn't you love to be in the truck right now to hear him calling for it? Give me that one, give me that one, give me that one. And we just saw three beautiful touchdown passes. Now he's looking for four. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And the ledger for them so far looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> Not sure it can be much better than that. They've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. And pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so he'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Muscle damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 51 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Fournette running right. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Over the middle complete. It's Evans. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Falcons. And they didn't get a whole lot accomplished through the air in those first two quarters of play. They'll need to up their game if they want to rally all the way back. Meanwhile, for the Bucks, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. Final adjustments being made for the second half. Whether they'll amount to much in a game that's already pretty well decided, well, that's another question. Nevertheless, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks. Yeah, that's something to consider. Are we in for more one-way traffic here in the second half? It has not been a competitive game to this point. The Bucks with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. And they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. 
And the Falcons ready to go back to work to start the third quarter. And they have a mountainous deficit looming in front of them. It was really, Charles, a disaster of a first half. So where do they go from here? The first thing they have to remember is that what's done is done, and there's no going back. And now you have to play this drive by drive. Obviously, come back in this spot. Pretty unlikely, but you still have to go out, take pride in your work, and try and put something together here in the second half. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Play action. It's Ryan. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones who need to touch the ball. Here's Ryan. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. And the safety there, another mistake. And these mistakes just keep piling up. How many more can they make? They put themselves in such a massive hole now. It's going to be difficult to dig out from under. Yeah, for sure they can't afford anymore at this point. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. This is taken at about the 14. The Bucks ready to take over once again. Well, the first half definitely went their way, and this would seem to be a great opportunity to kind of put this game a little closer out of reach with a score here. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them because if they can add seven more to their lead before the other guys even see the football, that could be the decisive blow in this game. I think that's how they're eyeing it. That's how they're approaching it. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. To throw, it's Brady. He finds his target, it's Evans. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I certainly don't want to pile on, but this defense has just not been up to the challenge in this game. And this continues as we see here. Coverage, not been very good. Soft in spots. There's an easy throw and catch for another first down. First down, Bernard. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. And sometimes all of your best laid plans of play design, your X's and O's, they can't always account for individual effort defensively. And this was one of those times. Just a terrific play to hustle over there and get the running back to the ground. And the final number here in terms of top speed, I mean, that almost looks like a misprint. He was just absolutely flying. Unbelievable. And just a yard to go here on second down. Fournette. 
And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. They'll run with Fournette. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Now Fournette. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Big stop, D. Big stop, let's go. Mark, Mark, let me go. Oh, now Godwin with a chance to run it. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. A give to Jones. And not much running room. Down to the 32. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down at four now. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot, he had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Deron Harmon. And the Falcons are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores. But, yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And last time they surrendered to safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you've got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. Seven yards, the pick up there. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. On second down, Davis. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got a boat down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. There's a nice pickup right there. And after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. Meanwhile, Ryan's throw here on target to Hurst. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. But maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long. But a nice throw there for a good game 
and a first down. A first down carry for Davis. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now it's Ryan. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. The sack by the Super Bowl champion and pro bowler, Jason Pierre-Paul. Enough to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. Ryan. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. And this one is right down Broadway. And that will finish off this third quarter of play. And they will not have time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa, where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. From the 27, Brady over the middle to Evans. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this one. He's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. A pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now, meanwhile, the throw by Brady knocked away incomplete. This defense can use some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. The Bucks on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and eight. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Grady Jarrett drops him for a loss of 12, and it also brings up fourth down. Here's Bradley Pinion now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. And we'll see what he can do on the return. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. So out come the Falcons now. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. They begin with a run by Davis. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. From the 27, Ryan. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. 
I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now here's a throw that's taken in by Tajay Sharp, and he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. The Ryan's throw taken in by Ridley here. This has to go down as one of the simple routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. From midfield now, here's Ryan. It's caught by Davis. Uses touchdown Falcons. Mike Davis, 50 yards. And the Falcons are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. To throw for it is Ryan. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Tough there, good pass, hit the hands, he just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere, seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch him all the way in and tuck it away. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick, can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all, and if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation, and now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Fournette once more on second down. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. We've caught a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. Brady. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Brady to throw for it on fourth down. Looking for Godwin and he's got him complete. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take it like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. They'll run on first down. Bernard, and he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 23. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Now carry there for Fournette as he's able to work his way for a gain of about five. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys, they're just saying, let's just keep running it out. We've got them now. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. 
typically we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? Brady looking to throw on third and two. And he fires one, but incomplete. Well, those two have hooked up for a touchdown once already in this game, that time unable to find the completion. Yeah, it just appeared they wanted to get him out into open space and try and get him the football. As you mentioned, unable to connect. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. Open man has got one. It's complete. And the Bucs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that's a big pickup on the first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense, they can't get the stop here. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. So that run gets them about halfway home. Yes, now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. Mike's by four. Mike's by four. Brady going to throw here. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there. And he's got it. Cut in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Giovanni Bernard. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. Well, partner, when a team's up this big, this late in the game, I always wonder what's their motivation because if it's me, I'm thinking about pulling on the reins a little bit. But for them, I don't think it's in their DNA. It's not in their head coach's makeup at all. I think his opinion is, you stop us. We're not supposed to pull back ourselves. Uh, extra point put through by Sucka. And they open the lead up now to 25. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And Patterson will not return it. It comes out to the 25. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Well, this is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. So I that's caught inside the 20. And they're able to get this way down there inside the Tampa 20. So fire the cannons. It's a victory here for Tampa Bay. And to be frank, Charles, probably not too many people surprised at how this one turned out. Yeah, I don't think so at all. I mean, they're such a good football team. They were at home. You know, you walked in and you looked at the advantages and you saw that they had most of them. It took a lot to try and even it up. I just thought two words for this ball game, methodical and predictable, and both of them came together.